Well, next week, a very special sports organization will celebrate a milestone anniversary in a very special way. Bill Binner has more in this week's Inside Indiana Sports Bill. Gary, thanks. And special is indeed the operative word, both literally and figuratively, as Special Olympics Indiana prepares to commemorate its 50th anniversary and its annual Summer Games in Terre Haute, bringing together nearly 3,000 3, athletes competing in eight sports. And here to provide details, as well as highlight other significant achievements, is Jeff Muller, Sowin's new president, relatively new president and CEO. And Jeff, welcome to the show. Uh, again, you've been with the organiza organization uh, 16 years, your last uh, almost year and a half as the president and CEO, but this is a very, again, a very special milestone uh, that take place 50 years, hard to believe. It is hard to believe, and it's, you only turn 50 once, so you gotta do it right the first time, right, Bill? So, That's right. Uh, 50 years ago, two professors from Indiana State University took a chance that people with intellectual disabilities could gain so much from sports and they brought Special Olympics to Indiana and we've been part of the Terre Haute community and part of the Hoosier State ever since. Anything, uh, I know again, all the summer games are always uh, memorable indeed. I'm, and as a disclaimer, I'm on the, been on the board of directors of Special Olympics, but uh, what do you have uh, uh, unique for, this, for these summer games? Actually, one of our co-founders, Dr. Tom Songster, is returning to the games for the first time in 10 years, and he's going to join us along with Dennis Schmidt, who was our first president back in the early 70s, and they'll join us and be our honorary chairs of the games. And then from there, we're going to have special award ceremonies for our athletes. We're going to do some uh, trading pins. Uh, to commemorate the 50th games, and uh, we'll just have a little, uh, a few things that we're going to keep to ourselves until the athletes show up at the games. And uh, again, this is a very busy time for you and your staff because this weekend, also taking place for the sixth year in cooperation with the IHSAA, the unbelievable unified <laughs> IHSAA Track and Field Championship. Yeah, uh, it's one of the best things that's ever happened to us. And by partnering with the Indiana High School Athletic Association, we're able to expand sports opportunities to students who normally wouldn't have the, the chance to represent their school. So this weekend will be the sixth championship for unified track and field. And 12 teams will be traveling around the state to IU Bloomington to compete for the state title. Champions Together, again, has been transformative in the way it's brought together uh, students at the high school level. Well, so, including, actually K-12. K yeah. Well, at the end of last school year, we were in 610 schools, K through 12, and we think by the time we finish this school year out, we'll be able to tally somewhere over 750 schools, K through 12, that we have programming in. It's more than just sports, though, Bill. We're, we're talking about anti-bullying, disability awareness campaigns, inclusion, and trying to, to open up doors of opportunity for students with uh, special needs. And Champions Together was one of the things that last March uh, the Department of Education yeah. thought that they might cut funding from uh, Special Olympics at the federal yeah. level. Tremendous, unbelievable <laughs> blowback. Uh, but uh, one of the programs, the specific program in Pearl was Champions Together. It was. It, it, for us here in Indiana, that if the cut had happened, it would have affected us by about a quarter of a million dollars and really would have stifled our growth in trying to get into, hopefully by the end of a four year cycle here, that we'll be in over a thousand schools across the state. And it really would have hurt our chances of doing that. Um, but luckily, based upon the members of Congress that represent us here in Indiana and those across the country, we were able to, to get back into the budget. Uh, by the way, I know, I know you want to uh, give a shout out to the, the city of Terre Haute. They've been unbelievable host for all these 50 years. Well, it started with those two Indiana State University professors, but we've been there ever since. And every year at June, our athletes return to what we call their homecoming. Most of them do not have an opportunity to go to college, and so Summer Games is their homecoming weekend, and the Terre Haute community is stepping up big time for us. I will reveal one more thing. The city of Terre Haute and the business partners in that community are stepping up to provide uh, uniforms for our athletes marching into opening ceremonies. That's paid for by the community of Terre Haute. That's terrific. Uh, uh, as we wrap up, uh, these games end, but it's always something going on. Next <laughs> up for Special Olympics? We do things year round. Yeah. And so after summer games for us next is our annual plane pull at the Indianapolis International Airport. But this year will be new to us because we're partnering with the Indiana Sports Corp and we're going to be part of the corporate challenge. So any corporate team that is part of the corporate challenge can earn bonus points for that competition by coming out and pulling the plane with us. All right, well, always something to look forward. Jeff Muller, thanks for your leadership. Continued uh, and have a great weekend in Toro for the 50th Games.